So my job in the band Fiction Plane is to play the bass, do the singing, complain about uh, world issues such as war and stupidity, and then basically go back on myself and be a hypocrite and jump around on stage like a fool. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I play guitar. Uh, we are a three-piece rock band, and uh, Metro is actually one of our favorite gigs in America. It's a wicked venue, and we're glad to be in Chicago. So thanks for having us. Let's start with the name. How did you guys decide on the name, and what's the meaning behind the, ma uh, behind the name? Okay, well, the name Fiction Plane is actually a uh, song that Joe wrote about 10 years ago. And basically, the, it means freedom to us, uh, musical freedom. And uh, that's what we kind of try and base our ethos on as a band. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's it. It's like pretty basic. We can play any kind of style of music that we want. We can. Joe writes all the lyrics, so it gives him freedom to talk about whatever he wants to talk about. And uh, Pete, who's the drummer, who's not here sadly, uh, and myself, Seaton, we can uh, sort of improvise around what Joe's trying to say uh, in any manner we feel that is suitable to uh, what he's trying to say, and it's a uh, complete freedom of music. That's what the band name means. How did Fiction Plane form, and how long has the current line been together? Are you listening? I'm listening. It was, Would you um, like to answer that? No, I'll answer that. Gaydar.com. Gaydar.com. Uh, about four minutes ago, and we just totally hooked up and got on, and it was like, yes! But in all honesty, we've been together for six years, like this. Uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. A roller coaster of wooden proportions. How many releases has you guys, have you guys put out? So how many what? How many releases have you guys put out? Uh, well, I'd say... Two and a half. Officially two and a half, but uh, actually sort of three and a half, unofficial. It's one unofficial release, which was our first album, which was a collection of uh, demos that we didn't really mean to put out as an album, but it somehow made its way onto the internet as that. And so it's basically three and a half, but two and a half official, like, you know, like adult, proper, like grown up records, I guess. What do you want fans to know about your latest release? We want our fans to know that it's available, and but they probably own it already. Um, I want them to know that they're going to be having a new release soon, and it'll be good. I think it'll be ten times better because this, the last record was ten times better than the first record, in my opinion. And so it'll go like that, like eh, oh. When will that new release be out? Next year, 2009. Musician influences growing up? Uh, one of my main ones was my uh, school teacher, who was a complete alcoholic. <laughs> Seriously, he was like totally out of alcoholic, but uh, he, he allowed me and uh, my friends to get in a, uh, a basement in the school and play together. And um, always encouraged us to play. And so he was a big influence on allowing me to play music. And uh, other than that, I'd say, you know, like there's. We're in Chicago, so I will say one of my Chicago fans would be uh, Tom Morello from Rage Against Machine, who's a big Cubs fan, and uh, I adore his guitar playing. I think he's pretty fucking amazing. And uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Nina Simone, uh, Rage Against Machine, Nirvana. I mean, it's pretty broad, but that's all the stuff I like. Do you want to answer? I really like the Muppets. It was. An animal. Animal's my hero. I basically base all my activities on animal. What song do you think really gets the crowd going at the most of your shows? Uh, there's the end of a song called uh, Put On Your Shoes that I think uh, really excites the audience. And it goes into another song called Sadder City Blues, which I think the audience enjoy. Or, you know, it's, it's a kind of a difficult question without sounding egotistical in what they enjoy, but I think it's... Arrogant twat. I think they like those two songs. And Two Sisters. Two Sisters is uh, our first single that we did off this record and people seem to enjoy that and that's uh, always a nice feeling when you see them enjoying themselves. So what is your favorite song, what is your favorite song to play live? Are you still Ooh, listening? I'm listen of course I'm listening. I, I'm multitasking. I, well, apparently men can't multitask but I think I can. I can do this and listen. But well, uh, it depends. I really like playing Two Sisters because um, some people have heard it on the radio and that makes, they suddenly go, oh, I've heard this on the radio, I like it. 
um, but it depends. Every night is different, so it's, you know people react to different things, and that's the real X factor in uh, playing live. Like every night, you know, you can go and silent. Sometimes you play an acoustic song and they think, oh, that's amazing. Or sometimes you do the same exact thing and they think it's rubbish. So it kind of just depends what, what, what night it is. I like these people. Uh, my favorite song is Put On Your Shoes. Um, I so I really enjoy it. It's, a, it's always a point that Joe introduces kind of the band fiction playing to the audience is like, you know, how you doing? You having a fucking rocking night? And it's just got this like very solid groove to it that is very enjoyable to play. And you can see, I always look out at people and see people's heads nodding. And uh, I get a lot back from the audience on that. And so I feel like we're doing what we're meant to do. So I enjoy that. What is a must have for backstage? I'd say, well, number one, Guinness. Guinness beer, for sure, for me personally. I think uh, Joe and I share a common love of socks for backstage. Fresh socks. Because if you're in a van, if you're on a van for like 10 hours a day and you kind of come on stage and you're like, oh, it was wicked, it's awesome, and there's no shower, and you're just like, oh, I'm going to stay, I'm going to drink in my sweat. And then you go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning like, oh, I'm too tired to wash and I'm going to get back in the car. So uh, socks is actually a really pretty nice thing. <laughs> Would you like to add? Yeah, I'd say socks and hot chicks, <laughs> by which I mean intelligent. Okay. What do you want to say to all those aspiring musicians who want to be where you are today? Uh, go out and play live and uh, never be scared of making a mistake. If you want to be exactly where we are today, go to Chicago, turn left, go next, it's opposite the uh, Cubs, Wrigley Field Stadium, and uh, just, just next to the Ginger Beer Pub. But uh, if you want to be musicians like us, don't be afraid of fucking up. Okay. What is in the future for you guys? Old age, grey hair. Uh, I don't know. What else? What about you? Ten albums, and I'm going to run a marathon in under three hours. That's it. What would you like to say to all your fans watching here on Rebel Access? Are they all from Chicago that we're broadcasting to? Yeah. Um, Batman was a pretty good city to shoot in Chicago. I don't know. That's the wrong way around. Chicago was a pretty good city to shoot Batman in because uh, yeah, I thought it was, it's very appropriate. It like, has this great sort of vibey feel of like s fog and darkness, and your city is fucking awesome, and I love it. I'd like to say thanks for being open-minded, non-idiots, and if you're in Chicago, thanks for being here. I don't know what that means, but yes, tomorrow, I'll see you there.